Welcome to part three of my video about the antenna that I thought could be fake. <clears throat> Turns out that the thing inside the plastic tube is in fact an antenna and I cut off the cable. You remember if you've seen that episode, there's this coax cable with an SMA plug on the end. In fact, there were two of those, so I've cut them both off and made a short, much shorter connection to the antenna and it behaves as an antenna should now. It receives signals and it has a nice SWR and it appears to function as you'd expect as a biconical dipole. What I've done now is being inquisitive I want to test the cable that came with it because I suspected that the amazingly low SWR that the antenna was exhibiting at the beginning was due to the cable loss and not due to the antenna itself. <clears throat> so what I've done is I've having cut off the coax cable and measured it it's actually five meters long so I've got two five meter lengths of RG174, I think it is, yes, it's what it claims to be, um, with an SMA plug on the end. So I've cut them off, <clears throat> and what I've done is I've, um, here's an adapter, and I used the free adapter pigtail that came with it, just cut the strange plug off of that, soldered them together as well as I can to be able to test the, uh, the cable. So this is just the coax cable, and the blue curve <clears throat> is the attenuation, S21, through the cable. And this is currently set to 2 dBs per division. Sorry that this is out of focus, but this little webcam doesn't have a focus option. It's fixed focus wide angle, but it <clears throat> at least shows the, the shape of the curb. So this is um, 2 dBs per division insertion loss on the cable. And so that's uh, 0, 2, 4. So we've got 6 dBs of insertion loss at around 700 megahertz already. And that antenna is supposed to work at 700 megahertz upwards roughly. <clears throat> so if you've got really two, four, six dBs of insertion loss, that means the loss go and return for a reflection is 12 dBs. And 12 dBs, that would be then the return loss, corresponds to a certain VSWR, which doesn't look too bad. I haven't got the table to hand to look it up, but you can see that the SWR, this is the yellow curve down here, which is one per division is very low. The SWR is about, what is it, 1.17, 1.2 at the worst and 1.0 at the best. I think these little ripples are due to the cable itself. So we're measuring the SWR seen at port 1 and it's very, very good between 1.0 and 1.2. But the, the cable has 6 dBs insertion loss and of course as you go up, here's 1.5 gigahertz where that antenna is also supposed to work. Then you'll see, if you just look at the average, the insertion loss is down here somewhere, so that's what's that? That's two, four, six, eight, about 10 dBs of insertion loss in that five meter length of cable, giving a 20 dB return loss, which is a very low VSWR. And you can see here the SWR curve stays low. So as I suspected, <clears throat> the loss in the cable is so great that you don't actually see what the antenna is doing at the end of it, nor pick up any signals. What I'm going to do, just for fun, is I'm going to disconnect one end of the cable. <clears throat> so we're measuring S11 here, the, the SWR of this port here. The other port's terminated in the input to the analyzer, which should be a nice match load if it's a good analyzer. So of course you're going to see a low return loss. <clears throat> I'm sorry, low SWR. So what I'm going to do is disconnect this just to see what happens, because we should expect this to go up to infinity SWR because it'll be an open circuit on the end of the cable. So that yellow curve should jump up to the top and stay there. And what happens is nothing. <laughs> That's not supposed to happen. This is a live video, folks. Probably because the analyzer is frozen, it does this sometimes. Okay, now it's unfrozen and it's working again. You can see these curves jumping around a bit to prove that it's running. Sometimes the display freezes. Maybe it's supposed to do that after a few seconds. Anyway, so what's happened? The blue curve has gone down to rock bottom. That's the insertion loss between port one and port two, which is now very, very high infinite because there's no connection between these two ports and so we'd expect that to drop down but we'd expect the yellow curve the SWR to shoot up to infinite SWR and as you can see it hasn't <clears throat> it's still remaining below 2 to 1 1.5 to 1 so it's showing a, a, a nice SWR reading from this piece of cable with an open circuit on the end which of course is not really what we want to see because that again is demonstrating that the insertion loss in the cable is what's giving the low SWR and it's got nothing to do with what's connected to the end of the cable. Um, in fact, this yellow SWR curve looks suspiciously the same 
as when the cable was plugged into the antenna, which of course it would because you don't see what's plugged into the far end of the cable. All you see is the, <coughs> the reflection from the cable itself, which is very low due to its internal loss. So the cable is completely inappropriate for this antenna or any antenna by the look of it, <laughs> even at 30 megahertz, I think I was measuring uh, quite a insertion loss. I'm not going to try and do it now, <clears throat> but um, it's a useless piece of coax cable. Might be okay for audio, <laughs> but I wouldn't use it at uh, VHF or UHF, which is where it was intended to be. So the culprit for the antenna not working, and all those bad Amazon reviews about the antenna is worse than a wet piece of string, is because of the, the long five meter piece of very lossy cable and the two of them connected in parallel at the end doesn't help anything. So um, that proved my my guess that the cable was the problem and not the antenna. So now I've got a, an antenna that works and I've got two pieces of extremely lossy cable, which, um, yeah. <laughs> any suggestions as to what I should do with those, please put them in the comments below. And any questions you may have and suggestions for more videos, and thank you for watching part three of the antenna video. I think this is the last one for this antenna, but I'll be moving on to a home-built antenna next, probably a disco. Please remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video.